Hello my art loving friends! In a video last week I had a lot of happy mail and I mean a lot. And I'm about to go on a trip, I have very little time, but what felt doable for me to play with today are the four tubes of Rembrandt paint that I received. We will also be adding in these Winsor & Newton synthetic sable brushes and trying them out at the same time. So several Christmases ago, my best friend bought me this Rembrandt 12 half pan set. And here are the colors that came in that set. And here's what it looks like. And I've only had the opportunity to use this cute little thing maybe three times. And every time I use it, I really love these paints. And I even brought them on a trip with me recently, like within the last four or five months, hoping that I would get to use them. But I don't know, something came up and I wasn't able to paint on that trip at all. So what we're going to do is modify this little palette in a way and add these two paints into there and we're gonna paint. And we'll have to redo our swatch sheet. Oh, I also had this Rembrandt tube of watercolor that came in one of those subscription boxes when I opened over 39 of them. I'll link that for you in case you missed that. And it's a white, but I'm still going to add it in this palette because it's a Rembrandt watercolor and they all need to be together, in my opinion. All right, let's go down to the desk and Play with watercolors. I love setting up new palettes. It's like more fun than painting sometimes, right? Do you guys agree? Tell me if you agree. Since this cute little metal tin is already branded Rembrandt there and there, I'm just going to modify it to add these other colors. And this one is that coated glass pigment. And I'm actually not sure if we can dry this out and be able to reconstitute it like regular watercolor or not. Uh, so we're going to find out. You can tell the way this is made, there's no room for more half pans in here. So little modifications in order. This one came with a little brush also. It's a pure red sable round four. It's just very tiny. What we have to do is take these pans out and then pull these off. Oh, actually the bottom of this is flat, so I can just put this away. I don't have to pull these off. Usually I pull these metal rivets out and it gives me the nice flat surface because these usually have a lot of divots for mixing space, but this one's pretty flat other than the four corners that it sits on, but that's not gonna hurt anything. And then we can rearrange our pans in here and decide, I wanna put these in full pans because they're such large tubes and I really like working full pans more. So we have a cerulean blue PB35. This is a different one. So it says cerulean blue thalo. This one is cerulean blue PB35, like I said, but this one is PB15 and PW6. So they are different. Here's some full pans that she sent me also with this paint. What I think I'll do is just put a little bit out. I have this half pan right here. I'll just squeeze a little bit out and let it sit for a couple of days before we pour it into a full pan and see if we can rewet it or not. It will be interesting. Look how pretty that is. Wow, gorgeous. It will also be interesting to see if the ones that come in pans already are formulated differently than the tubes. We'll know that by how good they rewet once they dry out in these full pans. Before I do that, let's make sure that all these half pans and four full pans will fit in here. I'm not putting these in their right order right now. I'm just using them as placeholders to see what all fits. Yeah, everything fits fine. I always label the pans first before I put the paint in, at least when I remember to, I do. Because <laughs> it's a lot easier to do when there's not fresh liquid paint in there. Yes, yes, you're right. I have five tubes of paint to put in here, not four. Ooh, look at that. So will five fit? Oh, here, here's one. Five fit, okay. How long were you guys yelling at me? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to do things in too much of a hurry. I'm gonna slow down just a little bit. Okay, <laughs> moving on. A couple of these, when I poured them into the full pans, did have some binder separation, but a little mixy mix with the palette knife and all as well. And they seem to have stayed together like that once I did mix them up. In other words, there was no more separation after they were poured and remixed. So I found in my stash this Rembrandt Spinel. This is a PBK26. This is a gift from one of you guys. And because I want to put all my Rembrandt paints together, I cannot fit five new full pans in here. I can only fit four. So I put the coated glass, the chameleon blue, green, gold, into a half pan instead. And when I was doing the swatching, which I'll put in a different video, all the real time swatching, it does re-wet. So we're good there. 
So this spinel can come in here and this is the layout of the palette. So I have to affix all of these pans now to the palette and this right here will be the color layout within the palette. So you can see exactly which colors are where in the palette. And that actually took quite a bit of time, sadly. <laughs> oh man. So for the painting today, today is day four of Sketchbook Revival and the one where they did the fox looked incredibly fun. She used a lot of acrylic inks in hers, so I may try to just use the Rembrandt paint itself. Plus, I also want to participate in Denise Soden's March challenge. I am a Patreon supporter of hers, and she does little challenges for her supporters every month, and this month is alpacas. So I thought maybe I could do an alpaca and a fox, so I could do sketchbook revival and the challenge since I'm going out of town a couple of days I'm not sure I'm gonna get the uh, alpaca done before the end of March unless I do it right now I don't I don't know I don't know that I have time for both of them so <sighs> choices choices well you're gonna find out before I do <laughs> before I forget I did want to show you this chameleon blue green gold you see this sparkle it reminds me a lot of the Paul Rubens glitter paper it's just really subtle but it's beautiful so a little sparkle in your painting. I've come up with the perfect solution. Don't know why I didn't think of it before. Instead of doing the Fox 4 sketchbook revival day four in the fun style she has, I will do the alpaca in the fun style that she has. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And I'm really excited about it because this is so darn cute, I can hardly handle it. And I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely depend on my palette swatches. You can pretty much tell what the light colors are going to be when you put them on paper. I say the exception to that is probably the gamboge, but when you get to the pans that all look like dark colors, I have no idea. I pull out my palette swatches every single time I paint, no matter how many times I have used the palette. They are invaluable and I highly recommend that you do them. So the new colors, this is the turquoise blue. So you can see it's quite a bit different than the tube. Well, not quite a bit, but significantly enough that that's why you do your own swatches. It's quite pretty. The cerulean blue phthalo is not too different than the label, but much lighter. And I did try and get a good mass tone up there at the top. So I don't think you would get that much darker without a lot of, thanks cat, without a lot of effort. Hey, you knocked stuff off. The gamboge is pretty similar to its cap cap label. I knew what I meant. Such a beautiful color. And this has the PO48 in it. That's why it's so pretty. <laughs> That's a pretty pigment along with the PY150, which is always pretty. I already showed you this one, but here's a different light of day, I guess. I think it was evening when I showed it to you before and I got a little blue on it. So that blue you're seeing is not part of it. It's just the sparkle. The transparent titanium white. Yep, that's transparent. So darn cute. This actually reminds me of Maggie over at Creating Cute Art. She likes cute things. Maggie, this picture's for you. Okay, I'm going to use my arches eight by eight. It's almost eight by eight anyway. So it's a little smaller than I want. I wish I had like a nine by nine square, but I don't. So I kind of have a big zoomed in face here. It's so cute. I'm not, not gonna get over saying that because it's true. Oh, I've lost my paintbrush. That cat that just went across my desk probably knocked it off. Well, if I ever find my tiny little paintbrush, we can try the Winsor & Newton little tiny thing out. Oh, yep, it's here on the floor. Look at that, look at that. Size zero, no sizing in it, or at least if so, it's not now. I thought we could use this for the eyes. Probably too small for the eyes. Probably the inner blue part, that would be fun. We have a lot of good colors for the inner blue part of this eye, because look how blue the eyes are. Okay, and then we're gonna try and stylize this somehow. And it took me a minute here to figure out the water and paint ratio to lay down paint on this rough paper. Now this is not Arches Rough, this is only Arches Cold Pressed Paper, but it is still a rough enough texture that a brush this tiny is a little bit of a struggle to get the paint down on it if you don't really load up this teeny tiny brush. Now this is a size zero. It's the Synthetic Sable Round by Winsor & Newton in case you missed that. And I switched when I got to the bigger part of the eye to the Princeton Aqua Elite. I can see this little tiny zero brush though being really useful 
for the fine details. I really like it. I'm glad to have it. I think it's a great addition to my collection because I actually don't have any teeny tiny brushes that I really like yet. I have one that I'm trying out, plus then I got this one, so we'll see how that goes. But this Princeton Aqua Elite is just a workhorse and I don't have a teeny tiny brush or I didn't have a teeny tiny brush because you can see the fine point this Aqua Elite comes to and in reality, I use it for everything. I use the fine point of my brushes on my big round size 12s. And I do figure out the camera focus here on this second eye, so I'm glad you put up with me while that one eye was out of focus. But anyway, this little tiny brush worked exactly for what it needed to, and the Princeton Aqua Elite filled in the gaps for me. I love it. And what I didn't tell you is that I've used Payne's Gray on the dark parts here. So this is the Rembrandt Payne's Gray. Beautiful color. Just this paint is such an unsung hero. It rewets beautifully. It goes down on the paper so nicely. The only reason I had to do a second coat on that first eye was because I was learning my water to paint ratio and I had way too much water in it. So of course it was light. And you can see just in the smack middle of that nose is also too light. I do go over that later with some other color and fix that. This color right here is the Rembrandt Sepia. Oh my goodness, I have never seen a sepia this color, but I am really in love with it. It is so unique and pretty. I think I'll use that a lot. In fact, I wish, I don't wish I had more Rembrandt paint. I need to use this more, but I'm so glad I have this paint. It's like such a good paint that I'm curious now, what is my favorite paint? And in fact, coming up on this channel is going to be a huge paint showdown. So if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It is absolutely free for you. And when this big watercolor showdown comes out, I am dying to know what is my favorite paint. Is it Core, like I always thought? Is it Rosa Gallery, like I'm kind of suspecting? Is it Rembrandt? Is it some other brand? I mean, there's so many really beautiful, wonderful brands of paint out there. I wanna know which one I enjoy using the most. So we are gonna have like a triple elimination contest of all the paint brands that I have, and it is going to be so much fun. I also am going to be trying the A Gallo paint again on Arches paper because I tried it on the Baohong sketchbook paper and I had some trouble layering. So there will be an upcoming test of A Gallo on Arches to see if we still have the same problems or not. So we're at the point, except I have to fix that eye, that I wanted to get all the darks in, but now if we want to stylize it, I need to do like a black and white thing. So I can make this into black and white just by altering it here. Black and white, okay. And that shows me where the lights and darks are, which is pretty cool. So if I'm trying to use bizarre colors from my little palette here, then what I will do is get my studio lights back on this and then I grab my phone and I'll take a picture of it. And then here on my phone, I can edit it and switch this to black and white just the very end and save. That will show me my values of my swatch sheet. So if I pick a random color, like this permanent matter lake, for example, that's actually a really dark value color right here. So I could use that for darks, except I put in my darks with Payne's Gray already, but it shows me my mid-tones much easier than my human eye, trying to figure out if it's a dark, medium, or light. So I think I might use the turquoise blue, which is one of our new colors, this one here, because it looks like it's a mid-value. It's a little hard to see in the screen, but compared to these darks, it's definitely a mid-value, and we have a mid-value in the grass over here near the bottom. And it'd be fun to have that turquoise blue in there. Maybe it will help bring out the eyes a little bit. So we'll try this flat brush from Winsor & Newton. One stroke synthetic sable, six millimeter quarter inch. So I think I'll wet the paper. One thing I'm running into, I think this method would be easier on hot press paper and that is what 
Tamara, I think is her name for today's exercise, used hot press paper. Especially with that tiny little brush, it's just catching the fibers, the roughness of this paper a lot. Now the turquoise blue. Let's see what happens. That's a beautiful color. It's definitely not grass, but I love it. <laughs> that color is amazing. Simply amazing. The brush seems fine also. I'm just lightening this out with water, although it's not lightening very easily. <laughs> There's a lot of pigment load in that one, apparently. I'm trying to figure out where the fur is. It's not that easy to tell here. That is so cool. All right, we'll bring, wow, there's still pigment in there. This one actually goes clear up to the eye, basically. And I think I wanna totally stylize this. We've got some subtle mid-tones kind of around the nose. That's one reason I was a little hesitant to put the darks in first is because they'll really spread again with a lot of water application. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to approach this. When I say spread again, I mean like reactivate. You can see it's reactivating already right there. So I was a little bit hesitant to do the darks first, but at the same time I wanted to. <laughs> All right, get some of this absolutely fun color going here. That was way too much water. Not gonna touch that anymore, but let's bring some of that in here. Get some water on the subject again. Clear into here and out. And I don't care if it activates the dark a little bit over here. That's fine. I'm not really used to working with a flat brush with watercolor, but it's working out okay. I actually wasn't going to use turquoise in the llama, but I guess I am now. I was gonna pick a different color. <laughs> How fun is that? Let's see, what other new colors do we have? That spinel is new, but that's just a black. Gamboge is crazy fun. One, two, three. The white, no, nope, I think we're good with what we got. I'm just gonna soften those edges. So you can see this brush, it's fine when it has water in it. I was gonna say it bends over. If you get the water out of it, it kind of just stays in one place which is not abnormal. I just noticed that it needs water. It needs its water. <laughs> I kind of want to get a pink in here. So our permanent matter lake came across as a dark, dark, but if we add water to it, it can be a medium value. That could be fun in here. Let's see what else came across as a medium value. Whatever's right next to it. Oh, that bright golden. It's not bright and golden, actually. That's a yellow ochre, but it's a pretty yellow ochre. Yellow ochre in this seems so normal. I think I'm gonna go for the red. <laughs> we'll just water it to a medium value. Where was I gonna put that? Oh yeah, down here. See how the brush kinda goes together? All I did was dab it off over there. So it likes to have water in it, lots of water. Saw a place that I want some of this sepia. It's the strangest colored sepia I have ever seen, but I kind of like it. Sweet. Me likes these a lot. Ooh, that red in the camera kind of makes him look like he's got a bloody nose. That's not awesome. Let's add some turquoise over that. We fix. All right, let's see if we can lift. Perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. Now. I don't know, thinking we should just stick with a turquoise llama. Wait, it's an alpaca. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really want to use that gamboge, so we're just going to. I'm trying to interpret my photo reference here. Whoa, that's so awesomely bright. I can't even handle it. That is so bright. We're going to have to get our sunglasses out. I don't know about that. I think we'll switch over to the yellow ochre. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. 
So you know how I just told you I was going to switch over to the yellow ochre? Well, I kind of used it for a few strokes, but then I just kept dipping back into that gamboge. It is such a beautiful color and it brought such life and vitality to the painting that I couldn't help myself. I just kept digging into it over and over again. And I think the painting color speaks for itself. What do you guys think? Also here I am kind of putting that same turquoise color over the gamboge, getting a little bit of a mixture, making it a bit of a green, but I think it's awesome because it's a nice little change from just turquoise and yellow or turquoise and gamboge and yellow ochre, which there was barely any yellow ochre in there. <laughs> so it's nice. I like the little green tints that we got by layering the colors over the top of each other. And you can see here, I'm using that flat brush to its full effect for the entire rest of the painting and I do really like it. I wish that there was a round one in this particular make and model of Windsor & Newton Professional that I could also try, but I am grateful to have this flat. I did one painting in the past that was all with a flat brush and I had a lot of fun and I will link that in the corner for you as well. I hope you can tell in my voice how much fun I am having with this painting. I do have a lot more to tell you in the video though. We are going to explore one of the other colors in a little bit more detail, so definitely stay tuned. I think the last thing we should do is add some sparkle to these here eyes. Let's see if this even works. It's still a little wet under there. I'm going to dig into that wet paint. Yeah, get some of that sparkle. Ooh, fun. All right. Nice. Oh, and we got to do the teeth. Teeth can't stay bright white like that. What are we thinking? You know, there's a little too much white space up there too. Let's fix that. Good enough. And the teeth. Alrighty. Well, that was fun. Maybe we should try and use this tiny brush to sign our name. Could be interesting. Use the same Payne's Gray. This could be scary. Beautiful. Worked. It worked. Okay. I don't think I forgot anything else, but this dude sure is cute. I kind of want sparkles on his nose too. <laughs> Why not? Look at some sparkles going up here. Yeah. Oh, that makes me happy. Well, what do you guys think? He's so cute. <laughs> Got some crazy hair going on, but I like it. Kind of thinking actually, we only thought we were done here. We're not. I'm just gonna get a little bit of the gamboge going in this area. Just a little bit. That's too much. I think I liked it. I was gonna say, I think I liked it before, but no, I like it now. I think it's great. Yeah. Add a little glow there and just a touch in here. Am I done? No, we are not. I just want a touch of the gamboge in the eye. There. Now we're done. I am very happy with this painting. Those were our five new colors with the exception of this transparent titanium white. And I think I forgot to tell you guys that it would be good for lightening up a color. That's what it's supposed to be for. Actually, we should test that out. It's supposed to be good for lightening up a color, but keeping the transparency. We can tell by looking at the black marks on this, which is transparent. That gamboge, I guessed, was pretty transparent. It looks like it is. I think that's gonna be our best bet. That turquoise blue looks very transparent. Let's do the turquoise blue, actually, because that one looks very transparent. What it's supposed to do is lighten a color without losing the transparency. Okay, that's the point. So here is the turquoise blue on its own. And it's kind of hard at the wet dry stage they're at right now. But if we add, get a clean brush and add some of this transparent 
titanium white, which is so weird because it's a PW6. It's supposed to just be, I don't know, it's very rare that they're transparent like that. So it's lightening it. Let's get some more. I mean, part of that is I'm adding water too. Just like, <laughs> I want to dig and dig and there's not much to get. Okay. Yeah, so I see what it's doing. It's just literally lightening it and keeping it transparent. Interesting. So it is pretty thick and gloopy right there. It's not thinned down with water on the palette that much. See, can you tell? And it got lighter without being opaque. Interesting. So I guess we can use that instead of water question mark <laughs> just add a bunch of water to this blue oh you know what i dipped into my dirty water and that isn't gonna work so let me dip into the clean water so there's that clean water if we just get a light version of it with water Does it look the same? I don't think so. I think it's a little bit more granulating. It's not a granulating color though. Not even a little bit, but can't tell if it's going to be different or not. It looks less dense, I guess, because I guess it's water versus pigment. So that makes sense. I don't know. Have you guys ever used transparent titanium white? And if so, what for? I like to use whites to make pastels, but this isn't going to give you a pastel color. Not really. I guess we could try it with the red real quick. I suspect we're not gonna get a pastel with a transparent white. I don't know, get a lot of pigment going. Okay, all right, we got quite a bit on our brush. Interesting. Water that down a little bit. Interesting, okay, we get a lot. Yeah, it's not, not making it pastel. Huh. That was way a lot. I had a ton of pigment there and I kind of got a pastel, but no, it still goes down, like I said, transparent. Look at this. Look at that, look at that. Okay, well, I need to go. <laughs> I am heading out for a trip right now, actually. What time is it? Oh my goodness. Yep, I have to go right this moment. I have six minutes left to finish this up, but oh my goodness. I just saw this over there on the desk. It's so cute. I mean, it was it was just right there. Oh, it's so cute. Just love it. What the heck? <laughs> it's a good day when you like what you created. Don't you think? Don't you think? I think so. That was an incredible amount of fun, if I do say so myself. I suspected this would be pretty darn fun, and it was. All right, I think there's a dog outside that needs in, so... I will see you guys in the next video. It's going to be a good one again. <laughs> All right. Bye for now. My hand didn't quite match up with my words there because I like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to wave as an afterthought. That was funny. Anyway, see you in the next video. Bye for now. We will also be adding in these Windsor and Newton. Sin oh, why am I looking over there? But I don't know. Something came up in, whoa, I just said that wrong. Okay, let's start over. So I found in my stash this Rembrandt Pinnell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah. I cannot fit five new half, oh my goodness, I keep saying half pants. Hey, that's not what I wanted to do. And those were our five new col, and those were our, wow, I can't talk. <laughs>